we are left over so let's get together like dead garbage i know many people love this couple i just don't i've got straight up cat hair all over me sorry about that <laughs> Hi guys, it's Siri, so welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about some disappointing AF sequels. I've done a video like this before, but it was a little bit more extreme. It was about sequels that, to me, like ruined a series. And that's not necessarily the case with these. Like, it didn't forever taint my memory of that series or like detract from my overall enjoyment, I guess. Well, it did, but um, not to the point of me like hating the series now. But these are just like sequels that uh, I had much higher expectations for based on the first book or the second book or whatever. And then they just like went to shit. Oops. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get started, please don't forget to like this video if you're enjoying my content and please subscribe and click the bell icon um, because YouTube sucks and won't tell you when I upload, which is, by the way, three times a week, every Tuesday, Friday and Sunday. So you don't want to miss those and uh, just get those notifications going so you actually know when something happens over here. But now, without further ado, let's get into this. The first is actually two books in one because it's two sequels that sucked a whole lot and uh, it's just a trilogy so that's a pretty bad ratio unfortunately but that is authority and acceptance by jeff vandermeer these are book two and three in the southern reach trilogy the first book is called annihilation there's now a movie about it and i really really love the first book i believe i gave it about four or five stars actually but the sequels just completely Ru I guess I guess in this case they kind of ruined the series for me but um they they were very very disappointing if you didn't know this is about like an area called area x it is somehow like contaminated and it has created like a distortion in reality somehow and when people enter that area um they get into like this really weird place and lots of these expeditions that have been sent into there have not returned and it follows an expedition of all female scientists um that at least the first book does that go off in there to try to find out what happened and what i really enjoyed about the first book is that it left so much to the imagination or like so many things were left unanswered but it kind of just created the sense of continuous suspense and I really enjoy the pacing especially of the first book because these aren't very long but I loved how it like kind of threw in at the deep end there were so many question marks you were just like uncovering something every kind of step of the way and you felt like there was so much more to be discovered and then the sequels it just felt like the time was wasted on like a lot of random things that were not really consequential a lot of the really big questions were not answered or answered unsatisfactorily if that is a word and it just got too weird for me and i know this is weird fiction and that's kind of jeff vandermeer's thing but i was not fully aware of that before going into the series and the sequels just did not deliver what I had kind of expected them to do and it kind of felt to me a little bit like Jeff Vandermey himself didn't really know what was going on in that area and that's why he didn't tell you it's not like a thing of like oh this is like a creative act right like it's I don't know intentional to leave you in the dark but he knows very well what it is like I think he has no idea and that's kind of a little disappointing the next sequel that was quite disappointing was Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. This is the third book in the Farsi trilogy. I read this like, at this point, I think over a year ago. <laughs> um, I love this series as a whole. I love the characters. But this book was too long. There was too little happening because it, there were like extended travel scenes throughout this book. I got real tired of them really quickly. And then the ending also didn't satisfy me in the sense like of what I wanted like it was kind of just like a meh kind of ending and I know it's difficult to tell a story that is like very interesting right away and kind of keeps building suspense and then delivers you the perfect outcome and I know that's super rare to find um but yeah I like this book did it right like two qu two thirds of the way right I like the beginning of the series I should say not the book I like the beginning of the series I like the build-up and then it was just like 
Eh. <laughs> the next disappointing sequel to me was The Mime Order by Samantha Shane, and this is the second book in the Bone Season series, and I've talked about that plenty before, but I reread re this book last year because I wanted to read the third book, which, by the way, is on my TBR for this month, so... We shall see how that goes. So I really enjoyed the first book, but this book kind of felt like stalling to me. Like there were some interesting developments in the like gang scene. I don't know what they're called anymore <laughs> because it's been a minute, but there's a different gangs in London and they have like different leaders obviously. And there's like altercations between them. And that was an interesting dynamic to me. But other than that, like the main, main storyline really didn't move along that much in this book and I know that this is supposed to be like a seven book series and I think that that's partially to blame for why I felt that way about it. Um, I feel like stretching one single story that long when maybe it isn't inherently suited to that long of a series uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. It doesn't necessarily work and I think this is one of the books where it just didn't could also be that, like, upon rereading, I was like, oh, I already know kind of what's going to happen, so <laughs> I didn't care as much anymore. I don't know, but that's the main reason I'm trying to read the third book now, is to see where I actually still stand on the series. The next book I know many people disagree with me about, and that's okay, but I think it kind of boils down to, like, a personal preference of certain characters, and that is The Dream Thieves by Maggie Steve Outer. This is the second book in the Raven Cycle series. The first book is The Raven Boys. I read this series, like, a couple months ago, pretty quickly, like, pretty much back-to-back, -back, and I rated this book two stars. Ooh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I know many people love this because they're really into Ronan as a character who's, like, the focus of this book, but I just wasn't feeling it. This is another book where I felt like the main storyline just stalled and stalled and stalled and nothing happened. What did I actually think about this? I can't remember now. I should probably check. Ha! You know when you write a review and then read it sometime later and you're like, that's a really good sentence. Um, in this case we have so much potential all squandered on... Squ squandered? squandered squandered on the fact that Kavinsky also should have been given a personality spanning more than one dimension <laughs> I don't know why I just like that a lot right now anyway basically I just refreshed my memory I was not a fan of Ronan's arc I think the potential in there was not fully utilized especially in correlation to Kavinsky it kind of like reading the rest of the series like maybe this is a spoiler ah warning signs going off one till you can like I guess skip until um, this book isn't here anymore. It's kind of a spoiler for the whole series. The whole situation with Kavinsky, in my opinion, only seemed to serve as like an indicator for his sexuality to kind of give us a clue and so that he could eventually end up with Adam, which I don't agree with. Like, I don't agree with their relationship like to me they have no chemistry it kind of seemed out of the blue it seemed huh, huh puns okay whatever it kind of seemed like uh it was like a pairing up thing right because blue ended up with Gansey but Ronan was in love with Adam and uh Ronan was in love with Gansey and Adam was in love with blue so they were kind of like ah <laughs> we are left over so let's get together like it doesn't work in my opinion I know many people love this couple I just don't and this is what I was trying to get at I feel like Ronan and Kavinsky had so much more chemistry and much more in common and they should have ended up together but instead they kill Kavinsky off and it's like now you know He's into guys as well, question mark. We don't know. But like, he's into guys. So kind of setting the stage instead of giving that dynamic the focus and the attention it deserved. And just in general, I feel like they should have ended up together. And Adam should have been like, ah, I'm just going to do my own thing. But this is going off on a tangent. It has nothing to do with this particular book anymore. I just felt like most of the cast of characters, which is like the main and biggest selling point of the series, was not giving enough attention in this particular book because all of it was focused on Ronan and also the gray man I think that's what he's called is introduced in this book and like given way too much attention and like n the other characters are just like they're doing nothing not really showcasing their personalities not really engaging in anything with one another at least not as much not giving them opportunities to really develop 
um, and instead just like wasting a lot of time. So to me this book was filler and I feel like Ronan's arc with like his dreaming whatever should have been handled in another book like maybe in Blue Lily Lily, <laughs> Blue Lily Lily Blue on the side and that book as a whole should have just been scrapped but I think I'm in the far far minority here like most people love this so and my second to last disappointing sequel was Dead Cold by Lewis Penny this is the second book in the Chief Inspector Armand Gamache mystery series it's set in Canada in a small town and I really enjoyed the first book when I read it last year but Dead Cold is dead garbage I didn't actually finish this book because I just could not keep reading it is extremely poorly paced for a mystery novel the characters are all assholes and it's very difficult to tell if this is because they're so very specifically assholes they're all very judgmental of other people's appearances especially of overweight people and it's very difficult to tell if this is like literally a part of every single character's personality or if it's just the author's opinion at that point it's like a little bit iffy like a little bit unsure and then as for the pacing as i said it's very bad the the main inspector doesn't enter the picture until like way into the book like 70 pages into the book or something the murder doesn't occur until page 100 or something i'm just like what is all this prelude i don't think that's necessary like this is not that long of a book it's like 300 something pages why do we need all this waffling in the beginning and by the time the murder happened i was just like I actually kind of don't care about any of this. And then the last book is kind of more of a honorary mention because I actually haven't finished it yet. And this isn't a book that I have like actually DNF'd, I just haven't finished it yet. I'm not actually currently reading it. I'm tentatively already putting it on this list because I think it's going to be very disappointing. And I, that sounds dumb, like I should just DNF it I guess, but like I don't know. We shall see. Uh, that is Arabella and the Battle of Venus by David DeLavine. It's a sequel to Arabella of Mars, which I think was an honorable mention of my favorite books of 2017. It's like a YA sci-fi alternate universe story that's pretty cool. Like I really enjoyed the first one because it's well written. It deals with a lot of more difficult topics in like a very age appropriate but still like challenging, intellectually challenging way that I really enjoyed. It has a trope of a girl pretending to be a guy and being like super smart with like automatons. I really was into that stuff but this book is just kind of weird and there was a romance in the first one that I was kind of shipping but in this book it kind of introduced a love triangle element that to me like I I don't have anything against like categorically against love triangles I think they can be done quite well but it does kind of have to happen before our relationship starts because if not then it's just cheating <laughs> like sorry but like if you've already like agreed to be with somebody and then you're like, hmm, what about this other person? Then it's not interesting anymore. Then it's not a like interesting love triangle, like who will you choose type of situation. It's just cheating. <laughs> um, and there hasn't been any overt cheating yet, but just like the allusion to a potential love triangle is like already irking me. And as you guys might know, I don't like cheating in books, at least not when it's you know just like so casual and like oh there's this other guy she also likes and i'm like no it's not okay you it's just kind of not okay but yeah i don't know i'm currently 100 pages into this it is altogether 420 ish pages i just don't know so far i'm like considering this a disappointing sequel it might still turn itself around who knows and that is it for some disappointing sequels i've read over like the last year or so i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below which sequels you found disappointing and why and also please don't forget to like and subscribe as i said click the bell icon to be informed every tuesday friday and sunday i will see you very soon with another video until then have a lovely week bye